It makes it almost look like some soffit light. And here you can see where that light is hitting the top um, and it just kind of really makes those areas glow. So that's um, how I would do that area there. And then I would go back to my standard four watt LED uplight. I would definitely have one on this little tree here uh, just to highlight that in the landscape. And then I would go across the front porch here and I would have that same light and I would light up each one of these columns um, all along here. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you want to see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's going to look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hi, uh, Suhail. Thanks uh, so much for your email and your pictures. Um, this is by far my favorite house to light. We've had uh, a lot of projects this year. We had people reach out at very similar houses um, and they've sent us some final pictures. And sorry, I was trying to find them and I, I just couldn't pull them up, but um, it always looks phenomenal because of the nice white trim. Uh, it's a very, uh, I don't want to say a common house, but it's a very um, traditional design and it just lends itself to lighting with all the white trim and stuff. So um, I love these. These are by far my favorite and I know, um, I know what these end up looking like and it always looks phenomenal. So basically the way I go and light something like this is really I'm using two kinds of lights. Um, if I kind of go back to uh, our standard lights, our two most popular lights obviously are up lights and our path and garden lights. I don't like to use a lot of path and garden lights, but it works well in an application like yours and I'll show you where. And then uh, some up lights like this with a couple twists and stuff. So there's a couple areas where you have some higher peaks where um, these are all four watt LED lamps, but in a lot of cases, I'll want to use something a little bit brighter. So I upgrade those to a five watt LED, which um, is just, they call a 35 watt equivalent lamp, um, but just a little brighter to push that light up. Um, and then the other thing I'll talk about is some gutter mounts uh, for some second story lighting too, which can really make things pop. So what I would do is with that up light that I just showed you and upgrading in on this side here, I'll start kind of from left to right. Um, here is where I would have um, three of those lights, but I would upgrade those to the, um, actually, you know what I would do to make it work really well is I would use two of the standard lights and then I would use one of the 35 watt equivalents, so a little bit brighter. And what I would do is I'd have my standard light um, kind of in the bed in the front here. You don't want it too far back from the house, maybe 12, 15 inches back or so, and have it shining more upright. So that's really just kind of grazing the front of the house um, and just making the nice white trim and everything that you have really stand out. I would do the same thing on this side and then I would have my slightly brighter one in the middle here so that it's getting light up to the top peak. The other nice thing about this is not only does it highlight the front of the house, but anytime you have white trim, that light hits the top and it really creates kind of like a reflective light. And I'll just kind of show you a quick example of that. Um, that makes it almost look like some soffit light. And here you can see where that light is hitting the top um, and it just kind of really makes those areas glow. So that's um, how I would do that area there. And then I would go back to my standard four watt LED uplight. I would definitely have one on this little tree here uh, just to highlight that in the landscape. And then I would go across the front porch here and I would have that same light and I would light up each one of these columns um, all along here uh, again. And I would probably even do it around the side here because then that just extends the viewing angle. So you have a nice view from the side as well of that lighting. Uh, again, that light's going to hit the top and then it just really makes us uh, glow with a really nice ambient light. Plus, because everything's white, you get some nice reflective light back down in the beds um, and it really looks good. And then over on the front porch area, um, just because of where the steps are and everything, I would still use that same light. You might have to get it in the corner a little bit and angle it a little bit um, towards the front step, but I would definitely try and throw uh, two of those lights there to uh, really highlight the whole front step area. The only thing I would do with those front step ones is I would add something called a hex baffle to those lights. Um, and we can help customize a kit with, with all the lights, all the materials, everything that you need to. You just let us know uh, what you like about these ideas and then we can put something together. But a hex baffle is just this little glare shield here. And what it does is it goes over the bulb in the light 
and it just helps deflect any side glares you're walking up and down the stairs so uh, it's nice to have in a high traffic walking area like that and then you know if you want to use a couple path and garden lights i it, personally i think it'll look really good if you didn't even have to use any path and garden lights but sometimes people do want to add them and i just use them kind of in between where i have my uh, up lights so say for example i've got my up lights here i might throw a path and garden light here here and then i might throw one over on the side and then i might kind of just do the same thing over here and over here and then you know if you wanted to down in this bed as well again i don't think you necessarily need to um, all I would say is that if you wanted to start out with just the up lights uh, when you're installing them, just leave a little extra room so that if you decide to put those path lights later, you can just kind of tap into those lights and, and add the path lights. The final step of this project, what uh, would really make it stand out is if you actually went and ran wire, usually we just run wire uh, right either inside or behind the, uh, the downspout and then across the gutter and I'll actually go and mount a couple lights on the second story using this gutter mount um, that we have it basically fits in the gutter screws in there the light screws into there <clears throat> all our connections are waterproof so you can run the wire make your connections right in the gutter and then what I would probably do is I'd probably have one of those mounted here kind of in between these windows um, I would try and get another one uh, on that's the only thing is where this gutter is um, so two things then just because of the way this gutter uh, kind of jets out here it's going to be tough to have that um, that symmetry of both lights in the same spot so you might even just want to put one here and you're not shining it right in the window really you're just trying to shine it up against the house so it kind of highlights this area and then I would do the same thing over here that's kind of shining up here and and highlighting this peak so you really just have two lights up here and then that kind of matches that peak it makes this whole um, second story area uh, stand out but again that's something you can always add later if you wanted to start with everything on the bottom um, just leave some extra wire down in this corner so that if you want to tap those lights in later you can just tap into the, your existing system and you can go and add those I just know that it brings another level of elevation um, that a lot of people won't do when it comes to landscape lighting but if you do uh, it will really make it stand out and I love the style of the houses I think it looks so good um, so yeah let me know what you think basically in summary I think you'd probably be you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven up lights. Um, did I say here too? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Sorry, twelve standard up lights, one brighter up light um, to kind of get started. You can easily fit those all on a transformer and wiring kit like this. And again, I can help you put these together. Um, but this 150 watt transformer would easily handle that comes with the wire the connectors the wi-fi timer and all that um, and the only thing you really need to add is probably the two hex baffles for these lights and then if you wanted to two more of the up lights uh, for the second story area along with um, the gutter mounts um, that you can find here so you can easily go and just add all those things to your cart or um, just let me know if you like those ideas. If you want any path lights or anything like that, we can customize a kit for you. So thanks again for reaching out. And uh, yeah, I hope this video helps. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. We're going to show you how to light your landscape using hex baffles and frosted filters. So when you're going to go and use these is anytime you have a accent light or any kind of light that's going to be close to your line of sight. So say in an entryway of a home and you don't want that light to shine in your eye. You just really want to focus it in on the feature that you're trying to highlight. That's where you can go and use a hex baffle just by sliding it under the lens of your light. And that's going to help keep the light from shining uh, in your peripheral vision and keep it more concentrated on that feature that you're trying to accent. So hex baffles are a must anytime you have a light close to uh, your line of sight or a walkway or anything like that. Next is a frosted filter. So sometimes you need an accent light to really concentrate that light on a feature, but it might be a little bit too bright. So you wanna soften that a little bit so it's not as bright and as concentrated. That's where a frosted filter is gonna come in handy. And same as a hex baffle, it just goes underneath the lens of the light fixture, and it's just gonna go make that light a little bit softer and a little bit subtler. So in any areas where you need that, and one of the lights just seems a little too bright, go and use a frosted filter to go and soften that a little bit more. But to get more help on that and more ideas, go and access our free consultations at lightingdoctor.ca. 
where you can actually send us pictures of your projects or upcoming projects and we're going to walk you through some great ideas and some great ways to go and use different things like this as well as all our other different lights and tools so thanks for watching Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.